Well, hello and welcome to The Terry Cole Show. I am so excited that you are joining me today. Whew, and if you've been following along, we've been talking quite a bit about boundaries. Boundary boot camp season was upon us. Now I'll be moving into other topics, but every year for about six weeks, I focus because this is one of my specialties. And one of the things that I think is so incredibly important in our relationships and for us to be successful. Um, it's like learning a language that no one ever taught us that is crucial to us being happy in life. So I hope that you enjoyed uh, Boundary Palooza and Boundary Boot Camp season for 2019. And I'm just gonna kind of keep it going because I've read a lot recently and we've all heard a lot about vulnerability in the news and Brene Brown is so brilliant talking about the power of vulnerability and. There's all kinds of books out there about vulnerability. And yet, what I'm calling this episode is warning. Do not confuse this for vulnerability. Because I think that there's a piece of this conversation that's actually missing that is incredibly important, which is that not all vulnerability or what we perceive or think is vulnerability is created equally because it actually isn't all vulnerability. So let's start breaking down. What is vulnerability? So this is when you feel exposed, when you tell the truth about yourself, when you draw a boundary or say no, you make yourself vulnerable by being honest. And a lot of us have learned a million different covert and overt ways to not be vulnerable. I think that there's this um, image we have from movies or television or I'm not even sure where, but that, that vulnerability means just sharing every nuance of every little bit of ourself with another person or with other people or online or in social media. And that's not actually it. So let's go through I'll go give you my two cents on how my clients have experienced this and what they've done instead of this. And then I'll give you some ideas of how to actually tap into um, your own understanding of how capable you are right now of being vulnerable. Are you being what I call voluntarily vulnerable? That means consciously vulnerable, mindfully vulnerable, like it's what you want to do. Um, it isn't just a knee-jerk reaction to something because people can have these habit habituated reactions both ways. So if, you know, we would say traditionally, if we were looking at um, heteronormative, what used to be sort of heteronormative roles, men would make themselves vulnerable less often than women in a real way from the old stereotypes, right? Don't cry, don't talk about your feelings, you know, and I know that, thank God, times are changing, but if we're looking at what we think about vulnerability societally, at least in the U.S. or in North America, it's that, you know, men in particular shouldn't really show how they feel about something. But there's so many other habituated ways that as women, we also were not taught how to be vulnerable and share ourselves in an authentic way because we're all kind of playing our roles in our families and wherever that is. So you can go both ways. That's what I started saying about this, where you can be too shut down, too avoidant, that you don't want to make yourself a target. You don't want to, what does vulnerability mean? It means that we are giving other people in our life sort of the power, the opportunity to potentially hurt us, reject us, um, mock us, make fun of us, um, we share something with them. What if they hold it against us and use it later at a later date, bring it up at an inopportune time or when you're in a fight? I mean, that's like the, we want to talk about fighting dirty. Wow. That's like the dirtiest. If someone told you something in confidence and then you threw it back in their face when you were angry. And I know this from my clients. I know that this is not an uncommon experience, but I have to tell you, if that shit is not the most enormous red flag, I don't know what is. So what I'm hoping to impart to you is that if you have someone in your life 
who is taking something that's important to you that you've told them in confidence and they throw it back in your face later or mock you for it, I, that I would seriously reconsider being in a relationship with someone like that. And if you're doing that, oh my God, please stop. Like, don't. Because here's the thing about taking someone's um, honest vulnerability and using it against them is that it's a very, um, it doesn't take a lot of brains to do, right? You don't have to be smart to do that. You certainly have to be mean and want to harm because it does do lots of harm, but it's very, um, I don't know what's the right word. It's very pedestrian. It's very common. Who wants to be basic, right? Because that, that behavior does not take any skill. It doesn't take any emotional intelligence. It's a very base way of behaving. My feeling, when you really love someone and they've made themselves vulnerable to you, when you're mad, even when you're furious, it's special to never use it against them. That is actually uncommon. That is something to aspire to rather than either putting up with someone doing this to you or doing it to someone else. It is really, because here's the thing with relationships, vulnerability, we have to have some real vulnerability if we're gonna have any real relationships that are meaningful, right? That feel satisfying. It is satisfying to be known. It is unsatisfying to be playing a role. You can do it for a long time, probably, but why do you want to? It's exhausting. So vulnerability in relationships is a requirement in, according to me, but there also has to be the mutuality where there has to be trust. So when you have these behaviors, the base behavior I just described, where someone makes themselves vulnerable and you take that later when you're in a fight and throw it in their face, this now creates lack of trust in the relationship. So it's actually, if this is a common thing, that you do if you're fighting in a relationship, you're now building the entire relationship on this faulty, very sandy sort of foundation as opposed to something solid. Because no trust will always be something, if, if there's a lack of trust in a relationship, that follows the relationship and can poison and toxify the relationship for the life of the relationship. So without trust, Listen, I know everyone has a different experience. I, I understand that for some people, being distrusting is a part of the way they were raised and they don't even get that it's a downloaded blueprint and this is how they're gonna go through life. Basically thinking that saying, you really can't trust anyone. You really don't know anyone. You know, you come in alone and you go out alone, although that is true in life. But there's something about thinking, saying that, that belief is um, gonna protect you from being betrayed and it doesn't. It's almost like, I'm gonna say the worst thing, I'm gonna do it before anyone can do it, nobody can be trusted, great. Now, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Do we bring distrustful people into our lives when we say that? Are we distrustful? And that's something that you have to look at for yourself. Are you a trustworthy person? Do you keep, keep people's confidence? Do you throw something back in their face if they're vulnerable to you? That's really a, you know, it's like a little inventory you can look at right now. But to, that's like one of the lowest things I think that, that you can do, whether it's a friendship or whether it's a romantic relationship or a family relationship. And I know lots of people do it. My feeling is I just know that you're better than it. So think about it as something to aspire to is to never, ever go for the low blow because that's really what, I mean, there's a million ways to go for the low blow, but that's one of them. Um, it would be great to not do that. So back to the things to avoid is the, the two things I said it could go either way. One was you avoid vulnerability. Then I went off on a whole tangent, so I'm gonna come back to that. You avoid it by using humor. There's all of these ways that we can block real vulnerability. Humor is a huge one. And listen, I'm all for using humor. I'm not saying it's terrible, but if you do it every time you feel vulnerable or every time you feel uncomfortable or someone else is making themselves vulnerable, if you make a joke, it's painful. 
it's it's interesting you know my husband uh victor who's amazing we've been married 20 years actually we just celebrated our 20 year anniversary last week um you know he's he's had to i mean listen i'm the walk of, you know what do i want to say i was gonna say walk at the park no it's what is it day, day at the beach walk in the you know walk in the park i think that's what it is anyway you get the point in that i really need to be understood like i really need to know that he knows what the hell i'm talking about or how i feel um about anything and sometimes if i'm really getting deep about something he'll make a joke um not at my expense definitely not obviously <laughs> But, but he'll make like a, like, like a double entendre type of a stupid sort of a joke or like try to bring some levity into it. And most of the time I just go with it because he's so amazing. I just go, okay, this is, maybe you're just torturing him too hardcore. He's just, he just can't take it. All right, fine. Sometimes though, if he does that and I'm at a pivotal point of saying something that actually matters to me and I do feel very vulnerable, I will just like stop talking, you know, and just be like, okay. He's like, no, no, finish. I'm like, no, no, you were pointing out the hawk, so let's, let's talk about the hawk, shall we? Like, you know, I can get angry, but if he does that once in a while, which is what he does, I go, okay. He knows there's going to be, I'm going to say something about it if he does do it. But if he, I couldn't even be in a relationship with him if he did it all the time. Because I need to, I need to know him. I'm interested in knowing him, like actually want to know him. Like I want to, because he's changing and growing. We've been together 22 years and he's still the most fascinating human I've ever met. Like I'm interested in what he has to say about the world, everything. So I think you need that in a relationship too for vulnerability. If, if, if you know the other person is interested in you and if you know the other person is trustworthy, then being vulnerable is the thing that truly deepens intimacy in a relationship but you have to want to know the person and you have to want to be known so over sharing and under sharing so the avoidance is the first thing i hit even though it was pretty convoluted but i think you got it and the oversharing, where you've have you ever been on a date with someone you've ever met someone who you just meet them and they literally tell you the worst thing that ever happened in their life or they tell you their whole entire sordid story and i can tell you from teaching um, women from all over the world in these um, courses that I have, Real Love Revolution, right, a course on love, and um, Boundary Bootcamp, which just launched the 2019 one, we're in session right now, uh, which is all about personal boundaries, language of boundaries, effective communication for women. Um, I can tell you that so many women have had this misunderstanding around sharing, and that they would believe that if they told the person or, or everything that they were actually creating intimacy with someone but it actually doesn't because sharing too much too soon actually is a block to intimacy because if the other person is kind of healthy and I'm not saying you can't have a deep dive with someone that you've just met I do it all the time but it, there's something about if you're unloading your entire life story early childhood abuse um, your, your divorce, your, you know, I, I, that, that's too much too soon. And it actually doesn't create vulnerability. It creates something between you and that person. Cause sometimes after you do that, or if someone does it to you, now you want to avoid that person because you wake up the next day and I call it a boundary less hangover. Cause you're like, Oh my God, why did I tell them about my entire last relationship? What the hell's wrong with me? Or, or what was I hoping for from that? So, so one way that there, there's don't do either one of those things, especially the oversharing. So that's really the, the title of the, this episode of the Terry Cole show, which is uh, warning, do not confuse this with vulnerability. Sharing like that is not vulnerability because it's, I mean, it is vulnerability, right? It is not healthy vulnerability. It is not voluntary vulnerability. It is basically indiscriminate vulnerability. And doing that is like living in a house and like not having a door or, or any gate around your house, right? That means anyone, you give anyone you barely know the power to actually really injure you, which, what? why we don't need to you don't owe that and I remember one one of my um clients saying to me once 
well, I'm in the dating scene now, um, you know, I'm in my 50s, and when do I have to tell them about my life? I go, well, what, what part of your life? No, I mean, everything. Like, you know, I, I, was, I had major uh, physical and sexual abuse in my childhood. I've been divorced twice. Um, I've had, you know, and she listed all the things. And I go, what, what do you mean? And she said, well, I usually just say it on the first date to get it over with. And I'm like, okay, definitely stop doing that. There's no need. I was like, hey, I have a question. Why do you feel compelled to confess you're in your 50s, which means you're you're going to be on a, a dating app, dating people somewhere in their late 40s to early 60s. They've had a life too. And that there was this urgency to like get it over with, to feel compelled. I need to tell them. You don't. And there are things, of course, if you're on a dating app and you don't want children, then yeah, those are things you should put in your friggin' profile. I'm not saying withhold um, important information from someone that they deserve to know if you're on a dating app and someone is dating you because they want to get married and have children and you don't. Withholding that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your life, that you have a right to your privacy. Because if you don't, um, if you cannot become discerning around who you are vulnerable with and what you share, then what you share is not that meaningful. Because it's like you're not even attached to, to why you're sharing it with someone. So think about the sharing in a mindful and an appropriate way is something that grows. We share about our life as the person shows us that they are um, someone who can be trusted. Right? Why are we going to share this important things about ourselves? with people that we don't even know if they're trustworthy yet. And another thing is about shame. That sometimes when there's a lot of shame around our past life experiences, we almost, we either feel compelled to say nothing about it, so there's the avoidance, or to confess all of it, to be like, well, if you're gonna reject me, do it now. And that's how you know that whatever it, those experiences were, probably need a little bit of re-looking at, a little bit of work, because Nothing that's happened in the past, if you've really worked through it, should have the mind-blowing power to be that charged right now. Because once we, pro even the worst things, even, even the death of a young person, even the worst things ever, as we actually work them out psychologically, mentally, emotionally, they still, of course, impact us in the, in the tapestry and the quality of our lives, what we've experienced, but it becomes just a part of the tapestry. And of course, you'll never, if you lost a child, if you lost a, a, a sibling, if you lost a, a, you know, a partner, of course, you're never going to, quote unquote, be the same again. That's not what I'm talking about. Of All of our experiences alter us. I'm talking about if something has the power to still have you be hysterically crying or on your knees or hiding in shame 10, 15, 20 years later, that means that that is unresolved trauma. That is not the normal course for trauma if you have done the work and talked it out. So back to vulnerability, there are many things that block us from being authentically vulnerable. And I, I just wanted this episode of the Terry Cole Show to get some clarification around. There's all of this talk about be vulnerable. And I think before we decide we're going to be vulnerable, because I am all about it, Brene Brown, I love you, yes. Be vulnerable, wholehearted people. I mean, yes, this is what we want. And in order to do it in a healthy way that is in the highest good of ourselves, and of our relationships, and of our careers, and of what we want to create in life, we need to fully understand what healthy, voluntary vulnerability is. And we do that by looking at the things, looking at the way, and I'll give you, you know, there'll be a downloadable cheat sheet for you that you can, there'll be a couple of questions for you to start to understand. Why 
has it been hard for you? So I'm gonna have, I have questions for you about family of origin because there's a bunch of ways and you know this if you've been following my work, we always look at the family of origin because was this modeled behavior? That's the first thing we look at. Then we look at what did you experience in your childhood? If it was dangerous for you to be vulnerable, if you lived in a chaotic home, an addicted home, an alcoholic home, uh, a very authoritarian home, then it would be scary to be vulnerable. So learning to be super closed up and just towing the line and following the orders and the rules or whatever was a way of, a very adaptive way of surviving when you're a kid that becomes maladaptive when you are an adult. So, anywho, um, yeah, that's gonna wrap it up. I want you to download the little um, cheat sheet questionnaire that I created for you so that you can do a little bit deeper dive on your own relationship to authentic, healthy, voluntary vulnerability. And then we can get moving on being more vulnerable in a healthy and amazing way because it will change your life for the positive if you know what it is. Got it? I hope that you enjoyed this. If this brought you any aha moments, if you think people in your life will like it, please share it on your social media platforms. Drop me a comment. I always want to hear from you. If you have never, if you listen to this podcast, we've been doing this for five years. If you've never given me a good review, please go to iTunes and do so. We have a bunch of reviews, but I really now am on a mission to get a thousand five-star reviews. So if you think it's worth five stars, please go there. If you don't, please don't, because <laughs> you're going to ruin. I'm trying to get this done in the next six months. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for being with me. I hope that it added value to your life. I hope you have an amazing week. And as always, take care of you.